Welcome back. Now it's time for part two of lesson four, comparing ratio relationships. Moving on to our next resource, use tables to compare ratio relationships. Roman is considering different bird seeds to fill his bird seeder. Measured in ounces, recipe A has a sunflower seed to peanut ratio of two to three. Recipe B has a ratio of three to four, and recipe C has a ratio of five to six. Which recipe is the greatest, has the greatest ratio of sunflower seeds to ounces of peanuts? And I'll tell you right now, doesn't matter what the animal is, birds, squirrels, whatever, they love the sunflower seeds over the peanuts. Which quantity will you make equivalent in each ratio in order to compare the other quantity? So to solve this problem, you are going to need to create your own ratio tables. And you're going to use those ratio tables to figure out which recipe has the greatest ratio of ounces of sunflowers compared to peanuts. And they have given you a great start here on the computer. So we're going to take and allow you to take some time and fill in those charts. You're going to press the check the your answer thing to see if your answers are correct and see what happens. I will give you a few minutes to work on that and then I'm going to pause it or I'm going to go in and we're going to look at a screenshot and see how I calculated all of my information. Now remember, you still have to be able to justify your answer. You cannot just throw down numbers in my class. You're going to have to be able to show me how you got there. So, how did I come up with my numbers? Well, let's start off with recipe A. Recipe A to go, whoops, I need to change it to marker. Here we go. To go from 2 to 4, I multiplied 2 times 2. So here, I've got to do 3 times 2, which is going to give me 6, which I'm going to put there. To get from 3 to 9, I multiplied 3 times 3, so I have to do 2 times 3, which is going to give me 6 right here. And to do 3 to 4, or excuse me, 3 to 12, I did 3 times 4. So here, I'm going to do 2 times 4, which is going to give me 8. This is going to be some supporting work here. Now, I see I'm running out of space, so I'm going to take and use my lasso tool here and see if I can grab some of this stuff and move it. So we're going to slide that uh, over here. Next, I'm going to take and grab that one and we'll move it over here. And that should give us some more room to work with. And finally, we're going to grab that one and move it there. All right, so on my next chart, I started off going from 2 to 8, I'm going to be 4 to 8, so that is times 2. So I'm going to do the same times 2 right here. 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. Next, I did 3 to 9, so that is going to be times 3. So I need to do 4 times 3 here, which is going to give me 12. And then finally, 3 times what is going to equal to 12? That's going to be 4. So I'm going to do 4 times 4 right here. And that's going to give me 16 for that spot. Final chart down here. 6 times what is going to be 12? That's 2. So now I'm going to do 5 times 2 is going to be 10. And then I'm going to do 5 times what is going to be 15? That's going to be 3, so 6 times 3 is going to end up giving me 18. And finally, from there, I'm going to figure out this last pair of numbers. 5 times what is 20? That's going to be 4. So I do my 6 times 4 here, and that is going to give me 24. And that's the numbers that I'm going to need to put into my chart, which I have back over here. So, I have my chart filled out. I'm going to click check my answers, and excellent. I got everything correct on that one. We're going to hit our next slide. Determine the greatest ratio of the sunflower seeds to the peanuts. 
So now you need to stop and look at them and see which one's going to have the greatest ratio. And there's a place for you to write an answer here. Move through the steps to compare the ratios of one quantity to each relation. And each relationship is the same and find which value the number of peanuts would make it easiest to compare the ratios. So what you're going to put in that box right there is which value of peanuts, the bottom number, do you think is going to be your best choice for comparing the ratios? Stop and take a look at it. Submit your answer and check it. All right, for me, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking the number is going to be 12 because I can see 12 peanuts in that one, 12 peanuts in that one, and 12 peanuts in that one. That is the only one in which all three have the same number of peanuts. So I'm going to go down here, I'm going to type in my 12, and I'm going to check my answer, and it checked. I'm going to hit my next button. Now, write the ratio to the recipe that compares the seeds of the sunflowers. So you're going to do that. You're going to put in how many sunflower seeds there were compared to 12 peanuts in recipe A, B, and C, and check your answer. I'll wait for you. Go ahead and pause it. I won't wait for you. Recipe A had 8 out of 12, so we're going to take and put in 8 there. Recipe B had 9 out of 12, so we're going to put in a 9 there. And then recipe C's right here, it had 10 out of 12. We're going to put 10 there. We're going to check our answers, and all of those checked as well. We'll move on to the last part of the problem. Because 10 is greater than 9 and 9, 8, the recipe with the greatest ratio of sunflower seeds to peanuts is, pick it, check your answers. All right, I'm picking it here. I'm going to say recipe C is going to be the biggest one with the most sunflower seeds. Dean got the right answer again. Excellent. Let's move on to the next part of this problem. Our talk about it, compare and contrast the graphs and using tables to compare ratio relationships. Well, the graphs, when we looked at it, it was a great visual representation. All you had to do was look at it. And whoever had the steepest line, that's the one you picked. However, the tables, not so much. You had to take and find that common base, which in this case was our three twelves. And based off of those common bases, then you could figure out what the best one was. So for a quick look, the graph is honestly an easier way to do this. However, making the graph is definitely going to be more time consuming. It looks like as normal our check is not going to work here so we'll just skip over that and go on to the next resource all right this one should be pretty quick and simple you pause the recording and solve this problem on your own i'm not even going to read it to you at first i want to see what you come up with and you solve this problem for me all right my turn when doing chores at home, Marcus spends five minutes sweeping for every six minutes spent putting clothes away. That's a five to six ratio. David spends eight minutes sweeping for every nine minutes spent putting clothes away. And then Carla spends 10 minutes sweeping for every 12 minutes spent putting clothes away. Which person has the greatest ratio of the number spent sweeping to the number spent putting clothes away. I think we need some supporting work on this one. We can't just throw down a name. We got to actually justify this and we're going to use a table to do it. So I'm going to pause my recording and take a screenshot. All right, my screenshot is taken. I got it on my whiteboard. Now we need to come up with some tables here to figure out who's going to have the highest ratio. So First things first, let's start laying out what we have. We have Marcus. And Marcus has five minutes of sleeping, sweeping to six minutes of putting clothes away. We have David. And David is going to spend 
eight minutes sweeping, two every nine minutes of putting clothes away, and finally Carla, Carla is going to spend 10 minutes sweeping to every 12 minutes of putting clothes away. Now we've got to find that common base, that common number to compare them all. So I'm going to run these out and we're going to make some charts here. So I'm going to just take and pick some spots here and we're going to fill them in. We may need more, we may need less. So I'm going to say 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 4 is 24, 6 times 5 is 30, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 4 is going to be 20, and 5 times 5 is going to be 25. And we're going to do the same thing here and see what kind of bases or comparisons we can make. So, 9 times 2 is 18, 9 times 3 is going to be 27, and I think I'm going to stop there because that's getting pretty high. I'll do one more. 9 times 4 is going to be 36. On the top, 8 times 2 is going to be 16, 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 4 is 32, and then we'll look at Carla. For Carla, I'm going to lay out as a group, but we'll just do three with her, I think. So 12 times 2 is 24, 12 times 3 is 36, 10 times 2 is 20, 10 times 3 is going to be 30. Now, do you see anything that has a common base there? Uh, no, nothing yet. But, I do see that if I was to go one more space out here, I'd have a common base of 36. So I'm going to take 6 times 6 is going to give me 36, and 6 times 5 is going to give me 30. And now I've got 30 to 36, I've got 32 to 36, and I've got 30 to 36 again. So going back to the question we had, which one has the highest ratio of sweeping to putting clothes away that is going to be right there David is going to win that one at 32 to 36 so I'm gonna go back over here I'm gonna pick David I'm gonna check my answer and yes we got that answer correct moving on to resource number eight mixing paint three friends each mixing containers of red and blue paint according to the ratio shown to create their favorite shades of purple paint. I mean, who paints something purple? A car? Okay, there's some cool looking purple cars, but a purple room? I mean, ew. Okay, each container is the same size. If each person uses six quarts of red paint, whose paint mixture will have the most blue? You pause the recording and start working through it. Ask yourself, what's the task? How can you approach the task? I do expect you to type something in here and submit it. What is your solution? I expect you to put something in there and check it. And finally, write an argument that you can use to defend your solution. Go ahead and do all of that for me. Pause your recording while you're working on it. Okay, my turn. Let's start off with what we have. First part, make sure you understand exactly what, to, what question to answer or problem to solve. So, what's the question we want to answer? That is, if each person uses six quarts of red paint, whose paint mixture will have the most blue? So, there's the, what, the answer to the first part there. Describe in context the problem in your own words. In my words, I'm going to say, I need to find out what the ratio of blue paints to red paints is going to be to where each person's using six cans or six quarts of red paint. What mathematics do I see in the problem? Well, I see that I'm going to be using a ratio table so that I can take and expand out my numbers until I get to that six quarts of red paint for each student. And then what am I wondering about? I'm wondering why somebody would paint a room purple. I mean, really? Okay. So, next part. 
He's going to say, what strategies can I, we use? We're going to type that into Word, so I'm going to pause it while I type. All right, for that one, I said I could either use a ratio table or a graph, the two things we've learned to use here, to compare the amount of blue paint to red paint when six quarts of red paint are used. So what strategies can we use? I've listed two of them there that I could choose. So I'm going to click my done. Am I sure I'm done? Yep. Now, use your strategy to solve the problem on a separate piece of paper. And that is what I am doing here. I've got things set up. So I'm going to take and extend my lines out. And I've got to get to where my red, which is on top, is equal to 6. My blues are on the bottom. Red over blue and red over blue. So for the first one, if I multiply by 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6. That's not what I need. I multiply by 3, 2 times 3 is 6. That's how many reds I need. 3 times 3 is going to be 9. For the next set of problems, I'm going to take, and after I only have to multiply once, 3 times 2 is 6. There's my 6 cans of red paint. Um, 4 times 2 is going to be 8. And then for my last one, I'm going to have to do two sets here. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. Now let's go back and look at our question one last time to make sure we understand what we're looking for. It wants to know, what did we highlight? If each person uses six quarts of red paint, whose will have the most blue? So going back here again, at six quarts of red paint, I got six, six, and six. The most blue is going to be Marcus, who is going to have this nine quarts of blue paint you see right here. So I'm going to go back to my answer document. I'm going to select Marcus, and I'm going to check my answer, and yes, I am a rocket scientist, and we are totally dominating this assignment. Finally, the last part, how can you show that your solution is reasonable? You take a minute, pause the recording, and write an argument that can be used to defend your solution. All right. Here's what I did. I said I created three ratio tables to compare the amount of blue paint to red paint for each of the three painters. Once I reached six quarts of red paint for, for each painter, I stopped. And then I just had to look to see who had the most blue. I'm going to click done. Yes, I'm done. Now that is all done and saved and we're going to move on to the next slide. Will the friends who use the most blue paint in his or her mixture always have the most blue paint no matter how many quarts of red paint are used. Why or why not? Think about that and, take, and write down an answer for me. Pause your recording while you do that. The answer is yes. He will always have the most blue paint assuming he keeps that same ratio. As long as his ratio of paint, red to blue stays the same and everybody else's ratio of red to blue stays the same, he will always have the most blue going on. Moving on to slide three, the check, probably not going to work. Let's see. All right, that check didn't work, so we are on the last of our resource groups. Slide one of one of resource number nine. You pause the recording, read the problem, and solve it. All right, this one has the same ratios going for the same group of three people painting, but now it wants to know if a person uses 12 containers of blue, whose paint mixture is going to be have the most red. That means we need to go back to this chart, we need to get rid of my arrow, and we need to extend out the blue lines, or the lines on everybody, until they have 12 for a denominator. So, moving to the next group, 3 times 4 is going to give me 12, and then 2 times 4 is going to give me 8. For this one, I'm going to have going to the third group, so 4 times 3 is going to give me 12, 3 times 3 is going to give me 9, and then my last group, I need to extend it out a little bit, 
I'm going to actually extend it out a fair bit. So we're going to come here again. And I'm going to take and say, well, 2 times, that's 2, 3, 4. So 2 times 4 is going to be 8. 2 times 4, 4 is going to be 8 again. 2 times 5 is going to be 10. 2 times 5 is going to be 10 again. And then 2 times 6 is going to be 12. And 2 times 6 is going to be 12. And now I'm comparing the, the groups that have 12 blue paints. And we want to know who's going to have the most blue. And that is, of course, going to be right here. Good old Hiram will have more blue paint. I'm sorry, more red paint in this um, mix of purple than either Marcus or Cassidy. So we can go back to our problem, select Hiram, check our answer, and yes, we are done. And with that, our lesson is done. You need to take and, of course, do your homework tonight. Get your check it as you're going online if you have that capability and submit it to me for grading so I can give you credit for it tomorrow and help you get ready for your test. Have a great night.